terahertz time domain spectroscopy has attracted attention from many scientific disciplines as it enables accessing the gap between electronic and optical techniques. One application is to probe spintronic dynamics in the sub-picosecond time scale. Here we discuss principles and technical aspects of a terahertz time domain spectroscopy setup. We also show an example of a terahertz time domain measurement obtained from a cobalt platinum thin film calibrant, which is a well studied spintronic structure emitting strong terahertz radiation. Our new terahertz time domain spectroscopy lab is located here at the Maxwell Center. The lab was mainly funded via my advanced research fellowship from the Winter Program and a European starting grant belonging to another PI in engineering, Anna Joyce. A time domain terahertz spectroscopy is a powerful technique for material characterizations and control, and there are different reasons why terahertz is useful in condensed matter. Historically, the terahertz range has been difficult to access in optoelectronics. Now, to give you an idea, the field of electronics addresses frequencies up to a few tens of gigahertz, while the field of optics covers the higher frequency ranges. Over the past years, however, research on terahertz has improved, and technologies to generate terahertz radiations are now widely available. And this is what is allowing a wider use of terahertz frequencies in new research areas. And one of these areas is uh, indeed spintronics. Spintronics means spin transport electronics and indicates electronics made of spins as opposed to electronics made of charges. The spin is a fundamental property of electrons, which makes them behave as very small compass needles. The spin of an electron has a direction and can point up or down or in between. Spin currents can be used to transfer information even in insulators where charge transport is suppressed. Spintronics has enabled higher density and cheaper hard drive storage via breakthrough technologies such as the giant magnetoresistance. The combination of magnetic tunneling junctions and spin transfer torque allowed the fabrication of a new generation of magnetic random access memories. In a spin transfer torque junction, spin polarized charges enter the ferromagnet and can switch its magnetization from one state to the other by generating torques. This is used to electrically write 0 and 1 bits. The time it takes for a ferromagnet to switch from one bit to the other is about one nanosecond. And this puts an insurmountable limit to the maximum achievable speed of those devices, typically in the nanosecond range. It also made sense to study these effects with electrical techniques with typical bandwidths in the gigahertz range. An emerging branch of spintronics is considering another class of magnetic materials intrinsically faster, antiferromagnets. In antiferromagnets, the magnetic moments at crystal lattice sites, rather than pointing all in the same direction as in ferromagnets, point in alternate directions. This means that an antiferromagnet always has a zero net magnetization. However, its internal magnetic ordering can be used to store information. In an antiferromagnetic memory device, the writing speed in the terahertz frequency range of a 1 or 0 bit is a thousand times faster than in ferromagnets. Studying antiferromagnets is one of the reasons why we invested in developing experimental techniques that are sufficiently fast to resolve their magnetic dynamics. And this is why we decided to build a terahertz spectroscopy setup in our laboratory. Our terahertz time domain spectroscopy is capable of performing terahertz transmission and terahertz emission spectroscopy. In the case of terahertz transmission, we steer a terahertz pulse to a sample and detect the transmitted terahertz pulse as the output signal. To do this, we have a zinc telluride crystal which emits terahertz when being pumped by a femtosecond optical pulse. Whereas for the terahertz emission, the optical pulse hits the sample directly the output signal is a terahertz pulse emitted by the sample itself. For both transmission and emission measurements, the output terahertz signal lasts several picoseconds. Because standard optical detectors do not have a picosecond resolution, a type of pump probe detection technique is used to measure the output signal with a sub-picosecond resolution. 
The technique is called electro-optic sampling, where an electro-optic crystal is hit by the output terahertz signal as the pump and a weak optical pulse as the probe. By measuring the change in the probe pulse transmitting through the crystal, we can construct the output terahertz signal in the time domain. In this setup, a titanium sapphire amplified laser produces 40 femtoseconds optical pulses at a central infrared wavelength of 800 nanometers. For illustration purposes, here we show a red laser commonly used for optics alignment. Note that this is not part of the actual setup. The source wavelength can also be changed with an optical parametric amplifier. The femtosecond laser beam bounces off a series of mirrors and passes through standard alignment optics before reaching a beam splitter. Here, 99% of the transmitted beam is used as a pump beam, exciting the sample, and the other 1% is used as a probe beam for time domain detection. We will now separately follow the path of the two beams, starting from the pump. The pump beam travels towards a delay line, which is used to introduce a relative time delay between the pump and the probe pulses. Different delays allow sampling different data points from the terahertz signal exiting the sample, meaning that the terahertz output signal can be reconstructed by sweeping the delay line. After being delayed, the pump can take two different paths. In the first configuration, or emission mode, the pump hits the sample directly, the black box encapsulates the sample and the part of the optical setup where the terahertz radiation propagates. Because water absorbs and re-emits at the terahertz frequency range, spurious signals can be prevented by filling the box with nitrogen gas. The beam is then collimated by a concave lens into a chopper and passes through a parabolic mirror. The sample is attached on a copper sample holder and mounted on a cryostat, which can be used to control the sample temperature between 3 and 500 Kelvin. A magnetic field up to 1 Tesla can be applied to the sample with an electromagnet. In the second setup configuration or transmission mode, the infrared pump beam goes through a zinc telluride crystal to generate a terahertz pump beam that is then transmitted through the sample. Here, the beam size is adjusted to fit a chopper wheel and then focused before entering a black box. The zinc telluride crystal emits a terahertz pulse due to a second-order non-linear electro-optical process called optical rectification. This terahertz pulse is then focused to the sample by two parabolic mirrors. The rest of the setup is the same for both configurations. We will now show the path that the probe beam follows after exiting the beam splitter discussed earlier. The probe beam is steered such that its path length roughly matches the pump path length and the time resolved detection can take place, as discussed later. The probe beam enters the black box and goes through a parabolic mirror. The terahertz beam coming from the sample passes through a wire grid polarizer mounted on a motorized stage, goes through a parabolic mirror and through another wire grid polarizer before reaching a second parabolic mirror. The terahertz and probe beams meet at this parabolic mirror and travel together through the black box. The terahertz and the probe beam spatially and temporarily overlap at a zinc telluride crystal where the electro-optic sampling occurs. The probe pulse passes through a quarter-wave plate and through a Wollaston prism, where the probe is split into its orthogonal components before reaching a balanced photodiode. Before running an actual measurement, the detection optical assembly needs to go through a calibration procedure without any terahertz signal. A probe pulse exiting the crystal without appropriate phase would result in a non-zero detector output, even without any signal. The compensation procedure consists in adjusting the quarter wave plate until the reading of the balanced photodiode is close to zero volts, or, equivalently, until the probe pulse exiting the quarter wave plate is circularly polarized. Once this calibration has been carried out, the terahertz pulse can be measured. 
The terahertz-induced birefringence modifies the electric field of the probe from circular to elliptical. This deviation, which is proportional to the terahertz field, is detected by the balanced photodiode. By probing the photodiode output as a function of the delay between the terahertz pulse and the probe pulse, the terahertz electric field can be reconstructed in the time domain. A lock-in amplifier is used with the choppers shown earlier to improve the signal-to-noise ratio of the reconstructed signal. In this section, we illustrate how to run a calibration measurement in emission mode with the terahertz time domain spectroscopy setup. In this experiment, the sample under test is cobalt and platinum thin film bilayer. We chose this structure as our calibration sample mainly because it gives very strong terahertz emission. It's a well-characterized terahertz spintronic emitter that gives you broadband terahertz up to 30 terahertz. We have our standard trace that indicates that our setup is working well using this cobalt platinum. So prior measurement, we put the sample and if the trace is lower than what we expect, means something goes wrong and mainly it's because of misalignment. Make sure the setup is configured in emission mode. Mount the sample on the sample holder. Mount the sample holder on the cryostat. Use the pendant crane control to bring down the sample until it is centered between the two electromagnetic poles. Use extra care to avoid collisions with setup components. This is the correct final position from outside and this is the correct final position from inside. Turn on the electromagnetic power supply. The electromagnet is used to align the magnetization of the sample. Slowly increase the current up to 20 ampere. Wear safety goggles. Switch the titanium sapphire laser power supply on and turn the three safety keys clockwise. Activate the laser from the laser control software. To start a new measurement, select Standard Multiple Iterations from the Terahertz Time Domain Spectroscopy Control Software. Click on Measurement Setting Enable and press Start. The probe monitor represents the probe pulse used for the electro-optical sampling. The probe must be stable, with a maximum deviation of 1% from the baseline. This is the terahertz time domain data acquired from cobalt platinum calibration sample. This is the amplitude of the fast Fourier transform of the acquired time domain data. The cobalt platinum sample is supposed to admit a broadband signal up to 30 terahertz, but here the FFT is only up to 2 terahertz. This is due to the cutoff frequency of the zinc telluride crystal in the detection area. This is a comparison between the FFT of the acquired data and the reference FFT from the terahertz signal emitted by cobalt platinum as reported in the literature. The good match between measurements suggests that the setup is well configured and ready for an actual measurement.